Poor ankle mobility can be the cause of a whole bunch of lower extremity injuries. If we don't have enough ankle mobility, it is a fast track to bad technique and pain. Today's video is all about improving dorsiflexion. My name's Nikki, this is QAD Fitness, and before we start, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a future video. A lack of ankle mobility commonly manifests in the squat, so we will use that as our example. As I get deeper into the squat, I need more and more ankle flexibility. If I run out of ankle mobility, one of two things will happen. I will either fall backwards or I will lose the positioning of the squat and put myself at risk for injury. The name of the movement happening at my ankle is dorsiflexion. Dorsiflexion is pulling the top of your foot closer to your shin. Using a few anatomical principles, we can develop a tailored solution that will improve our ankle mobility and prevent our ankles from from holding us back in our pursuits in and out of the gym. Firstly, we need to test our ankle range of motion to identify what is the cause of our lack of mobility. You may have seen this test before, but what we are going to do is to place our phone against a wall. The average smartphone height is around five to six inches, so it is perfect for this test. Place your toes against the other end of your phone. This will be our starting point. Move the phone so you don't crush it, and then try to drive your knee forward so it touches the wall. Make sure that your knee does not collapse inward or your heel does not lift off the ground. If you can touch the wall with your kneecap with no problems, it's a sign that your ankle mobility is decent. If you can't, you are likely feeling it in one of two places. The first is a pulling sensation at the back of your calf, which just feels like a muscle being stretched. Your calf is comprised of two muscles, the gastrocnemius and the soleus, both of which make up the triceps surae. One important anatomical difference between the two is that gastrocnemius is biarticulate, which is a fancy way of saying it crosses two joints, the knee and and the ankle. Conversely, the soleus is monoarticulate in that it only crosses the ankle. Soleus is the one that we need to focus on because in this test our knee is bent, so any calf muscle tightness we are feeling has to be soleus. If we straighten our knee when we are stretching our calf, we will just end up stretching gastrocnemius because it crosses both the knee and the ankle, we will be stretching it at both ends. We need to keep this in mind later on. The second is what feels like an obstruction at the front of your ankle and it almost feels like your bones are running into each other. In fact, that is actually what's happening. To find out what is going on, we need to have a look at the anatomy of the ankle. You have quite a few bones in your foot and ankle region, but the ones we want to focus on make up the talocrural or ankle joint, and they are the lower parts of the fibula, tibia, and a bone in your foot called the talus. The tibia and fibula make an opening in which the talus sits, and sometimes there is a lack of space which causes mobility problems. In a properly functioning ankle, when we dorsiflex the foot, the talus is meant to slide posteriorly to accommodate this movement. If the talus does not slide back, then your tibia or shin bone is simply going to ram into the talus, and this is the cause of the obstruction that you are feeling. So to fix this issue, we need to, in effect, retrain the movement of dorsiflexion to get the mechanics that we're after. I will show you three exercises that will address both of these causes and fix your ankle mobility permanently. Ready? Let's go. All right, let's get flexible. We're going to start with our banded dorsiflexion. So what we're going to do, you're going to need a chair and a resistance band. You're going to wrap it around your leg, get it right over your ankle, and all we're going to do is to push that knee backwards and forwards for two minutes in total. A couple of important things. First is that the band must be attached lower than your ankle because we want the band to be pulling our talus down as well as backwards to get the best out of this drill. The second thing is the positioning of the band. We don't want to have the band too low because that's just on our foot and not doing anything and we don't want it too high because that is actually pulling your tibia backwards which is the opposite of what we want. Where we want it is right on the hinge of our ankle making sure that it's sitting right over that talus. We're going to do this back and forth for two minutes. You must make sure that your heel does not lift up off the chair or your knee does not cave inwards. You must make sure that that knee is tracking in line with that big toe as you're bending it backwards and forwards for two minutes. All right, next up we have our soleus calf raise. We're going to need a kettlebell or any kind of weight, a bunch of books, it doesn't matter. What we are going to do, we're gonna step forwards into that lunge. We'll be working this front leg. Now all we will do, put that kettlebell right on top of your knee. And from here, we're gonna lean forward as if we're going into that lunge again. Once we get to the, as far as we can into the movement, we're gonna lift our heel up off the ground, contract that soleus, back down to the floor, back it off a little bit, and then we'll do it again. Drive that knee forward, lift the heel up, contract the soleus, back to the floor, and then take that weight off a little bit. And we're just gonna do this back and forth for 15 reps with a nice one second pause at that top position. 
Okay, so now we have our last drill. You're going to need something long and straight like a broomstick. I just picked up a random piece of wood from my garage. So what we're going to do, place your object right next to your pinky toe. Now from here, we'll drive our knee forwards, but we're gonna drive it around our object, okay? This will force our talus to shift to the other side as we are bringing it forward because a lot of times people will cave their knee inwards to get around that ankle mobility. That is why you see people squat with poor ankle flexibility that will always cave their knees inwards. So we're training our body to do it the right way by shifting it to the other side. So again, we will do two minutes backwards and forwards, keeping that heel in contact with the ground at all times. So there you go, three exercises that will improve your ankle mobility quickly and permanently. I will link the entire program as a PDF in the description below. I hope you got something out of this video and if you did, please subscribe to the channel. My name's Nikki, this is QED Fitness and remember, knowledge is power. Catch you next time.